Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about Filter FM. This is in the same spirit as my last video. I just want to run through the sound design concept because I think it's a little bit overlooked or underused and people don't really pay attention to it. But it's a very cool technique either way and that's why I want to show it to you today. So here's the project setup. As you can see we have a saw wave here in oscillator B which is just going through a filter and that filter is being modulated by an LFO. So far so good. You would say okay what is so different here what is so new here well let's look at the lfo frequency you can see that it sets very particularly to 49 hertz and that is the exact same speed as the key of g so if i play them this lfo is going to synchronize with the actual wave happening here So you can hear that this allows you to actually change the waveform in certain ways depending on the shape that you set here you can go whatever shape you want. Depending on the modulation amount you get stronger effects. You can do all kinds of creative things here. Now obviously this doesn't work with every key. If I play a different key it's going to be out of sync and then it's going to sound terrible. Not really what we're after. So this is really a useful technique if you just have one single note that you're trying to play it like in a lot of Sidetrend synths where you just have a single note that is being played that is part of the sequence, a single key. In that case you can just use the LFO. In other cases you might want to go with the noise oscillator. In my last video I showed you how to use the noise oscillator for windowing. You can do the same with the noise oscillator for this type of FM. The fun though with the sound designing here is that the shape is so important on the kind of sound that you get. You saw me playing with the shape before. What you can't really do is play efficiently with the shape, kind of gauge what the sound is going to sound like and then also use the noise oscillator. Because once you use the noise oscillator and you assign it, then that shape gets assigned. If you make a change here, it's not going to be reflected in the noise oscillator. So you have to drag it over again, make sure that it's reset, all of that kind of stuff. And only then do you actually get the updated shape. So it's not as easy to quickly adjust the shape and listen to what it sounds like. You're also not able to like fine tune this if you want to see the difference between this and this. You would again have to assign that first to the noise oscillator for that to take effect. What the noise oscillator does allow you to do is to key follow it. So you want to set it up like this, 48 semitones, and then you want your sound yourself to be one octave lower. So that means that I want to turn up my MIDI by one octave. And now I can assign this here and I can turn this into the noise oscillator. And now you can see that the noise oscillator is being used to actually modulate the filter here. And the cool thing is that it's key tracked. So it works with different keys that you play. Now obviously this is just a saw wave going in, but you can imagine that it becomes very very crazy if you change the waveform going into it. And then obviously you can change the shape accordingly. Maybe you want something like this, a little bit more high endy. Want to do maybe something like this. Again, this is where you can play and experiment with the shape and really start to experiment with this technique here. Another way where you can experiment is with what type of filter you are using. Part of the sound here comes from the kind of phase shift that we're doing. That's why I'm calling it FM because it has the same kind of phase shift properties as an FM setup does inside of Serum here. A majority of the FM synths nowadays actually use phase modulation because that's easier to program and gives very similar results. There's a little bit of a difference in there in terms of how it's implemented and how it actually works under the hood, but the resulting sounds are basically the same. What that means though is that we're essentially, when we're FMing, we're applying phase shifts and obviously filters do that as well. But what happens with a filter is obviously that you also have the boosts and the cuts that you're doing. So not only are you applying this phase shift, which in this case you're applying to different harmonics differently. You can see the phase shift being built in right here. Different harmonics are going to be shifted differently depending on this graph. And obviously that graph moves around. So 
So you get the phase shift as well as an amplitude shift from this. Which means that if you go with something complex, you get very complex kind of FM sounds. can use the flanges maybe, maybe the phaser. You can really hear that you can experiment with all of the different filters that are in here to get various different sounds. So that's what I hope to do with this video, inspire you to once in a while use this technique for your sound design. So with that being said, this is where I'm going to end the video. If you enjoyed it, then let me know by leaving a like. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave me a comment as well, or join me on my Discord server where you can write me a message as well. Finally, if you're new here and you want to see more of my stuff, then make sure that you're subscribed. You can also turn on bell notifications to get notified by YouTube whenever I upload something. But that's going to be it for the video. Again, I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.